Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome to a new short tutorial here on the channel that we're going to do basically making a simple two player game. And we're going to make this game themed around Christmas because it's December, we're coming up to Christmas, so we're going to make this short little game that you can make yourself and bring home for your family for Christmas and have some fun and adventures playing the game you played. Now, this is going to be a Christmas kind of themed game, but obviously, this can work at any time of year. You don't have to use the same. Uh, assets that we use in this video you can use your own stuff and equally make it a completely un unrelated to Christmas fun game uh, so before we start actually um, laying out the game which is what we're going to do in this video here I'm going to do a quick little demonstration of what we're actually making so what we'll have is two players that can run around it's kind of a little bit awkward for me to control this with these guys myself but they can run around they can jump and they can fire little snowballs at each other and you can see up the top up here, they have little candy canes for health. And the idea is you just throw five shots and whoever gets five shots wins. Very simple little game for uh, anyone to kind of play and enjoy as they go. So what we're going to do first of all here is take the art assets that are included uh, in a link down below this video. And we're going to lay out this stage and get everything kind of sorted for us to start making players actually do stuff in the game. So, we'll just, I'll just quit out of this, actually I'll just close that. And I've started a new project here in Unity. And first thing we're going to do is create a art folder. If I can spell art, it would be good, there we go. So we've got an art folder and then I'm going to drag from the files, as I said, that will be included in the link down below this video. We have this little art file here. So I'm going to drag that into our game. And obviously we want to be able to put this in our game here, so we're going to need to split it up into lots of pieces. So we'll go over to our settings over here, we'll make it a multiple sprite. Uh, we're going to have it at 16 pixels per unit. Um, uh, we don't want to extrude edges. We, we want to set the filter mode to point, and we want to set the size, because the size is 128 by 128. We want to set the max size to be 128, and compression to be none, because it's a pixelated image so we don't want anything to be compressed so I'm going to hit apply there then we're going to open our sprite editor and we're going to make this automatically chop up our sprites for us so we're going to go here and we're going to go by cell size and say pixel size of 16 and slice that up like that and now what you see is we have some of these kind of empty ones here which have just uh, been filled in which we don't want so we're just going to delete these guys and we have our little snowball here. I want to resize this box to fit around the snowball because that doesn't need to take up a whole frame. I'm going to delete these other ones here. Just get rid of all these extra ones that are kind of generated when we automatically slice it up. Uh, and the other thing we want to resize is this box here. Like this. Just around, that'll be our little health meter at the top of the screen later on. Uh, but of course, we don't want to resize the boxes around the player because we want the player to always be centered in the same position. So we're going to apply those changes there like that. And then we're going to go back into our game. And if we switch over to our scene view, we can see our camera is all set up nicely for us. And what we'll do, first of all, we're going to pop a little player into the world just for us to be able to have a little bit of a reference. So we're just going to drop him there. The next thing we're going to do is just lay out the, the basic settings of our scene. So I'm going to drag this top corner up here like this. I'm going to drag the top just kind of into the middle and then this one over here. Then if we look over to the side, we'll see the one with the black edge on the right hand side of it, we'll put on the left. And then the one with the black edge on the left hand side of it, we'll put on the right. We're just kind of roughly laying these out now. We'll actually align them up in a minute. And then we have the bottom pieces here like this. And there like that. So now we have them roughly in position. But we, we want them to actually be able to be perfectly evenly spaced. So for example, this one here in the bottom right, we want that to be set to, instead of 8.7 whatever, we want it to actually be 8.5 exactly. And we want this one to be minus 4.5 like that. So equally this one here, we want him to be minus 4.5 and we want him to be at zero. And then this one is minus 8.5. And then 
again at minus 4.5. So we'll do the exact same thing with these other pieces, but we'll do it a little bit quicker. So we can do both of these. We know that they both have the same x position. Actually, hold on, we need to verify. Yes, it's minus 8.5. So we'll highlight these and we'll just say minus 8.5 on these guys. And this one should be 8.5 positive. So we'll just say 8.5 there like that. And then up at the top here, we want it to be 4.5. So we'll highlight the three of these and just say y should be 4.5. And then finally, we need to move this one to the right position at zero. Okay, so we have these nice and evenly spaced. So let's quickly make some copies of these that we can move around. But before we do that, we have in our hierarchy here, we're starting to get a whole load of these and we don't want them cluttering up our whole system uh, and getting lost in things over here. So what we're going to do is actually just, we're going to rename this first one to be the player or actually player one because we're going to have two players eventually. And then we're going to create a new empty object that we'll call, we'll just call it the background. And we're going to click and drag all of these into here. So now we can just collapse that whenever we want to be able to make it nice and easy. So our four corners are in the right place, they're fine. But what we need to do is take both of these, we're going to move them down. If we hold control while we drag them, they'll move in exact increments of one. Um, I just realized that these are too high now. Actually, no, it won't matter when we're um, putting them into place really. So we'll leave it as they are there because they're perfectly fine like that. So we're going to, now that we have the two of them moved down a little bit, we're going to hit control and D to duplicate them and then move them up one and we'll do the same, move them up one again, same again and again and again, just like this. So there we go, we have that like that. And we're going to do the same with our ground and our top up here. So we're going to move them over to the side like this. And what I actually do is, I want to line these up perfectly. So we, instead of having them be at zero flat, we want to have that be at 7.5. So we're going to duplicate them now. Oh, oh, we didn't duplicate them. Duplicate like that hitting, by hitting Control and D. Or of course, if you want to duplicate, we can also, um, if we go here into our hierarchy, we can duplicate them like that. So we'll just do that, for example and hold control and move them over, then control and D, and we're just filling up our little level here with all of these bits of ground. Okay, so now we've got the edges of our world set up. The next thing we need to do is actually make it so that we can have um, collision on these things. So what we're going to do is put a box on the left, on the right, on the top, and on the bottom. So we're just going to pick one of these, we'll go for a middle one, kind of makes the most sense. And we're going to actually select two of them like that. And we're going to add a box collider to each of those. And you can see the box collider is obviously uh, way into the side like that, which we obviously don't want. So what we're going to do is set the size on the X to be 0.5 and the offset to be minus 0.25 that. Uh, we can see that works for this one, but it doesn't work for this one because we have both of them selected at the moment. So we'll just highlight this one here and change that to be a positive 0.25. So now that we have both of them, we can stretch up their boxes. So we'll make the Y height nice and tall. So now our players won't be able to run off the side and we'll do the exact same thing up in the top. So now we'll select two of these like this and we're going to add a box collider 2d again this time we're going to make the y size 0.5 we'll set the offset to 0.25 and then on this bottom one we'll set it to minus 0.25 and now we can stretch out the x value to go across the bottom it doesn't really matter if they stretch off the sides it's going to have no effect on our game at all. So that's perfect. So we have those set up. So now we're going to set up some little platforms for our players to be able to jump on. And in our sprite sheet, we have uh, somewhere around here. Here we go. We have three little pieces here for making platforms. So I'm going to drag all of these into the world here. And now what we're going to do is create a new empty object that we'll call platform. We're going to call this platform tree and we'll see why in a second. Well, 
we'll see why right now because we have these three different pieces that we're going to use to make this platform so for example what we're going to make sure and do though is we're going to set we're going to start our platform just here for the moment we're going to make sure that this middle piece goes exactly into the middle of our platform which is, so that's our art number 14 here so we want to set the position on the x axis to be zero and on the y axis to be zero. Oh, wait, sorry before we do that we need to make this a child of the platform or else it won't actually uh, go to the center of the platform for us so we need to make 14 again we need to set it back to be zero and zero so now it's exactly in the center of where our platform here, here is although it's a, it shows now that our platform is kind of off center that's because it's kind of averaging the position of all its child objects as well our the center of our platform is at x position zero which is right here in the middle so now that we have the center of or this piece centered up what we can do is go to piece 13 here and if we go to move it and if we hold V to select one of the corners we can do that and pop it into position so it locks in right beside the other one and we can do the same here with number 15 and pop it in right there and we, as we can see we've got absolute hold numbers here which is what we want to happen um, for it to line up perfectly for us so that's one platform what we're going to do next is duplicate this so we're going to now call this platform five and very straightforward we're going to move this one just up a little bit like this we're going to take 13 and 14 here hold control and move it over one space then we're going to hold 15 and move it over one space to the right and then we're going to duplicate 14 so it's the middle piece and now we have a platform that is five pieces wide we're going to make one more platform that we'll call platform seven we're going to move this one up as well and do the exact same thing but this time we're going to move these pieces over one move 15 back over like that then these middle pieces we're going to move just like that so now we've got three different platforms here the next thing we want to do is make sure that they all have a box collider so that our player can actually walk on them so we're going to add a component box collider 2d the height will be 0.5 again we need it to be offset so we'll set the offset to be minus 0.25 like that then we'll adjust the widths of all of them individually so our platform 3 the size of that will be 3 platform 5 the size will be 5 and platform 7 the size will be 7 so there we go we've got our three different platforms here the next thing we want to do is we want, we want these to be prefabs that we can reuse so if we wanted to make various different levels in our game and have some different layouts we can easily be able to have these platforms that we can move around whenever we want to so in our assets folder we're going to create the prefab folder here like this and we're going to drag the 3ds oh we have to drag them in one at a time but we're going to drag the 3ds into our prefab folder so now we can reuse them whenever we want to and whenever we make changes they'll carry into our prefabs so we've got our three different objects here so let's lay them out a little bit so that the game can be a little bit fun so i'm just going to put this one here i'll take platform five and put it here just kind of roughly i'm just roughly placing these you might want to be a bit more uh, specific with them but for now we're just moving them around roughly and then i'm going to drag a new platform tree into here like this and we'll keep platform this platform seven up here so now we have some space for our players to run and jump around in all the way we want to but at the moment all we've got if we look at their game view it's kind of a bland looking just a little bit of a, a landscape kind of view going on here so what we're going to do is add in a couple of little black background or a couple of background details just for a bit of fun and variety so in our little art file we've got these three little objects we've got a little candy cane covered in snow a little sign and a little bush so I'm just gonna pop a few of these in here now, as you can see it's appearing in front of the background we don't really want that but we're gonna fix that in a second so we'll just drop these in randomly doesn't really matter too much where you put them let's make this one be backwards by making the scale minus one like that so we've got a few different objects in the scene but as I said this for example this bush here is in front of the ground which we don't really want we want it to appear behind if anything so we're going to highlight all uh, five of these that we just put in place we're going to set the sorting layer on these we can leave it at default but we want the order to be minus one 
so it'll be, be it'll appear behind all the other objects in the world. Now that is one way to do it, but of course, since as this is Unity and we're working in a 3D space, what we can also do is change the Z position. We could change that to be anything above zero, it'll go further away from the camera basically. So we'll put that back to put that back to be zero, and we'll keep our ordering layer at minus one. So now we've got this little scene all laid out. Nice and simple, very straightforward, and as I said, we have various different pieces we've used, so we can make some other levels if we want to at some point. But there's no point in making other levels unless we have an actual game to play. So in the next episode, we're going to take a look at how to move our player around and how to make it um, an actual game that we can play. So thanks for watching this episode, and I will be back soon with some more Unity tutorial goodness.